You are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. This is your boy Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin. Welcome to the show, guys. If you're new to the podcast, welcome to the show. If you're into anime, nerd culture, and most importantly, video games, you come to the right place because we talk about all of that shit here. This is podcast episode number 363. I want to apologize for the last podcast because I said it was 361 when it was actually 362. I uh, had a little brain fart there. I've got so many podcasts. Sometimes I just lose track, I guess. So apologize for that, guys. But yes, this is number 363. OK. And we have anime to talk about. We have some, uh, I guess, daunting news concerning Microsoft or Xbox, I shall say. And then we also have Stellar Blade because I have finally got a chance to play that. And we have some uh, switch information just a little bit uh, to talk about. So without further ado, guys, let's begin the motherfucking show and let's talk about my anime watch list. My anime watch list has been crazy this week. I've watched a shit ton of anime. OK, I'm going to run down a few of these that I've been uh, watching. But first, let me start off and say I have not watched Demon Slayer, the first episode of season four. It is out now. If you guys do not know, a lot of people didn't. I was talking to some people the other day and they said, oh, I, I didn't even know that was out again. And, and it happens. You know, a lot of these anime we we watch and from season to season, you have those gaps and then you're watching something else and you get you lose track. And next thing you know, you forget about some of your favorite anime sometimes. And that is kind of like where we're at here for a lot of people. But yes, it's, it's out. I'm going to watch it after this podcast. Um, I, I wanted to wait, but I'm definitely going to talk about it next week because I'll be talking about this episode and then the, the next episode after that. So really, I'll be kind of talking about the first two episodes of season four. And hopefully we get 11 episodes. The format has been 11 episodes the last few seasons, at least the last couple of seasons. It's been 11 and we should get 11, but I don't know. Um, but I'll keep you guys posted on that right now. I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume we're going to get 11 episodes, but anything changes, I'll let you guys know. Anyway, all the other anime, though, <laughs> and it has been a lot. OK, I've been watching a lot of them, guys. Um, let's see. Uh, one of them I've been watching is called uh, Hayate, the Combat Butler. All right. This one is about some boy who was just down on his luck, man. He just his parents did him dirty. I mean, they literally <laughs> they literally had him working since he was a tiny child. OK, and they weren't doing shit. OK, he'd bring home the money. They take it and spend it on frivolous things. Matter of fact, they spent a lot of the money um, on gambling. OK, so then he owed the mob. Their family owed the mob so much money and then they left him with the debt. OK, uh, they were he was saving up money for years uh, while he was going to work and they were just sitting at home. And he comes home and finds out that they left him with nothing and they just left him. They abandoned him. All the shit. I was like, what? What is going on here? But anyway, yeah. So he lost his job as well because he was lying about his age. And, they, you know, he, was, he lied and said he was older, but he wasn't. So they fired him from there. And it was just a lot of shit going on. So it was wintertime. He was cold. He was freezing to death. He was on par. He was about to die. OK. And he meets this random girl by chance. And she happens to be really rich. And next thing you know, they become friends. She's kidnapped. He saves her. And they, you know, develop a bond. And that's how the show starts. And she ends up hiring him. He needed a job. So she hired him as a butler. And yeah, and basically paid off his debt. 
she paid off his debt to the mob and basically said, now, you know, to pay us back, you know, just stay around and be, be my protector. And that's how it starts. I only watched like three episodes of it, but yeah, so far, so good. This one is only only subbed. It's not dubbed, which is surprising. This is an older one, too, at that. Um, and I'm surprised it's not. I'm sure if I search online, you could probably find find it and with the dub version on there. But, you know, sometimes Country Road is funny like that with a lot of their anime. And it's just it's a head scratcher. But anyway, it's pretty interesting. Definitely going to finish that. Definitely one to look forward to. And how I came upon these really is I was just Googling. You know, I think I was I Googled like the top most popular sh- harem animes. I was I was looking for more harem on Crunchyroll. OK, and the, they started kind of spitting these out to me and I started looking them up and, you know, taking a taking a chance on some of them. All right. And I think they had like a top 20 list or something like that. And girlfriend, girlfriend was like, I want to say on the bottom. I think it was like number 17 or 18. And I'm like, it, you know, it just goes to show you beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It truly is. And you can put two people in a room and wa- let them watch the same shit. OK, and you're going to get two different reactions. You just are. You're going to get one person who may love it. You're going to get one who possibly might hate it or is not as enthusiastic about it as the other person. Right. That's just how it is. We're just wired completely different. Um, and that's just how it goes sometimes. So whenever you look at a top 20 list, top 10 list, I I don't necessarily give it that much weight. I do consider them and I do, you know, I give them a shot, but that's as far as I go. I have to literally watch them myself before I can make that judgment because there's movies out there like that. There's games out there like that, guys. I've talked about it a lot of different times where I'm thinking it's the greatest thing since sliced bread and then somebody else is shitting on it and vice versa. So it just depends on what it is. I love Final Fantasy 16. There's a lot of people who fucking can't stand it because they didn't like the direction it went. And like I said, it's just the nature of the beast. So same thing goes for anime. And I just wanted to give you that side tangent right there. But moving along to the next one that I had a chance to take a look at. This one goes by the name of Rosario plus Vampire. This one is about (laughs) about a human boy who hates school. He's always getting bullied and, you know, he's not very smart. He doesn't do very well in school. And he finally got accepted to some school his parents found for him. The reason he got accepted is because it was a special school for uh, monsters. Okay. And they all hate humans. Okay. Most of them eat humans or or consume humans or kill them. And they didn't know he was a human. Okay. Somehow he got into the school uh, on the bus and it took the the, the bus rolled down this long pathway. I, I just kept thinking of Nightmare on Elm Street. That's what I kept thinking about. But anyway, He meets this girl who's a vampire, very powerful vampire, legendary one at that, I think, befriends her. They develop a relationship. I've only watched a couple episodes, but so far, so good. And he's getting bullied, of course, by one of the other students. And she basically uh, she goes apeshit crazy on him. All right. She wears this this chastity slash chain around her neck. And whenever it comes off, she changes her attitude, changes and everything it. I mean, it, yeah, it's it's different. OK, she's a completely different person. Um, she's super powerful. She's already strong naturally, but then she's on a whole nother level after that happens. And yeah, man, that's where we're at right there. Pretty interesting. Definitely something to take a look at. Am I going to finish it? Yes, I'll I'll definitely look at it and see where where it goes uh, and, and go from there. But that's another one. Next one on the list <laughs> is one that's. That goes by the name of, I think you pronounce it like Ten Peru or Ten Peru. I, I don't know how to pronounce it, man. T E N P U R U. And this one is about a, a guy who decides that he's done with the dating life and he just doesn't want to be bothered by it. So he joins a covenant. OK, only to find out that this is a all female covenant. OK. And they're all around the same age as he is, just a little bit younger. I think he's like 20, 21. They're like 17, 18, something like that. All beautiful girls, of course. And yeah, that's where he finds himself. Okay. Of course, they, when they meet him, they don't want him there. They're like, what are you, what's going on? He's supposed to be, it's supposed to be all girls. And 
I guess they all thought he was going to be pervy and he was going to do all this shit. Right. But he really tries his best not to engage in that type of stuff because he <laughs> he doesn't want to partake in that shit. So they eventually kind of come around. Not all of them, a couple of them at first. And, and then I'm sure the rest will eventually come back around. And I think I watched four or five episodes of this because he he started to develop a relationship with one of the girls, one of the main ones who didn't want him there when it first started. So, yeah, um, it's going to be interesting. I think they're all going to end up turning my fucking phone. I think they're all going to end up turning, uh, changing their tune as the show progresses. That usually what happens in, in most of these anime. I remember high school DXD. It kind of happens. Kinda, something similar happened. Where, you know, only the, the main girl took a liking to him and then everybody else didn't. And then slowly as the episodes progressed, they all got on board and it's just beautiful to see. But anyway, yeah, I think that's one of the greatest harems of all time. Um, it's up there with a couple of these other ones. Uh, High School DXD. Definitely check that one out. That is a fucking banger. But anyway, that's that one. The next one I want to bring up <laughs> is called The Cafe Terrace and The Goddesses. OK, so this one is about a young college kid whose grandmother dies. She owned this cafe when she died. And I guess he had a fallen out with his grandmother before she died and he left. And I guess they hadn't spoken, you know, for months. I want to say damn near a year. And she ends up dying and he comes back and he inherits the, the place. But he comes back to a bunch of beautiful women who are inhabiting this place. They're sleeping there. OK, the place is pretty big. Nice and sizable, has multiple rooms in it. And these girls are just in there. OK, he didn't know what the fuck was going on. Come to find out they bef they befriended his grandmother not too long after he left. And she took them in as part of the family. All right. So, of course, he he's going to get the place demolished. He had already filled out paperwork. Hey, I want you guys to turn this into a parking lot and I can turn it into a business and get paid off of this. Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, him and the girls, of course, had a falling out. They didn't agree. <laughs> OK. And as the show progressed, I guess he decides to um, he's really stingy with money, but he's really smart as well. And he knows how to make it work. So he, he decided to give it a go and give him one year. Basically, hey, I'm going to take one year and I went ahead and paid my tuition. I'm going to take a year break and I'm going to see if I can uh you know, turn this into an actual profitable business because it wasn't profitable when his grandmother had it. She didn't really care about money. She was just more that type of person who was just, you know, for the experience. You know, I wasn't making a lot of money here, but it's my my shop. And, you know, I'm a people person. I'm a people pleaser. He's he he wants to make money. He wants to turn it into something. So he's going to take that year. And with the, the girl's help, uh, they're going to try to make it a reality. So that's where I think that's like the first or second episode. So, yeah, that's another one right there. That's a harem, of course. So we're going to see how this transitions. OK. And yeah, so we're, we're going to find out. So these are some of the ones I've been watching. I think there is one more. And yeah, this one's not a harem, though. This one is actually a, one that goes by the name of Revenger. And it's about a guy who he had a wife. OK, a fiance, shall I say. He was he basically, you know, it's a revenge story is, is what it is. Technically, uh, they get she gets killed. Um, I'm not going to go into detail of how all that happens, but basically he gets his revenge. OK, ends up getting it. But he meets these he meets these uh, this group. OK, and what they do is get revenge for other people who can't get it themselves. All right. So, hey, something happened to my father. He was killed and. Uh, the killer is just going to get away and I don't have any, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. Yada, yada, yada. So they pay this, <laughs> they pay these, this group and they go and get the revenge for it. Okay. For you. So they'll take care of it for you. So he's so hell bent on revenge now, because even though he got his revenge back from, you know, for his fiance and all that, uh, he, he's still not, he's still not happy. OK, he's still just drunk with revenge and, and it's not quenching his thirst that did kill didn't quench his thirst. So he's he, he's he, he's basically he was a samurai, but he's dishonored now. And now he's just a ronin and he's trying to find his way in the world now without, you know, the the family he thought he was going to have. So that's where we're at on that. 
it's more to it than that, but that's the that's the gist of it. And it's pretty good. I've watched uh, I've watched about five episodes of that so far. So with that, with all the other ones I've watched, I'm watching in between right now. You know, I've, I've got a full plate. And then there's there's another one I want to watch that is really popular. Everybody's talking about this one. And it's like six, seven seasons. And it's like it's, I think it's called Data Live. I think that's what it is. So, yeah, that's another one I'm going to check out this week and I'll fill you guys in. It must be pretty good. It's like six, seven seasons. So it's definitely been been doing its thing. And I've seen it, like I said before, I've seen either previews and I've, I've just seen it in the animated community, I've you know, online, whatever. So it's a popular one. And I'm going to check that one out. So hopefully it's as good as everybody thinks it is. Even if it's half as good, it'll, I think it'll be a good one. So, yeah. So that's me. That's that's what I'm going to be looking at uh, moving forward. And after I get some of those out of the way, man, you know what I said? I'm going back to One Piece. I'm going back to fucking My Hero Academia. I'm going to knock out some of these. I have uh, The Goblin Slayer season two. There's No Guns Life. I'm almost done with that final season that I never got a chance to finish. So there, there's a lot of shit out here. <laughs> Uh, still, and, and I'm going to tackle some of that stuff, man, and get caught up on that because I think My Hero Academia is coming back around. So I definitely have like two seasons, man, to, to fucking brush up on and, and get back caught up there. So, yeah. And then hopefully we get some One Punch Man this year. I, I'm going to hope and pray sometime soon we get that. I know we had a trailer not too long ago, and usually when we get that, they're gearing up to finally, after I don't know how many years, give us this next season. So, yeah, I just I hate that that they're dragging their feet and we we have to wait so long sometimes uh for a certain anime. It's it just it's a drag sometimes, but it is what it is. We got Demon Slayer here and we got some stuff in the pipes down the pipeline. Hopefully we get some 86 uh, as well this year. So, yeah, there's a lot of stuff on the horizon, I hope, um that we get to uh take a look at this year, 2024. So, that's my anime watch list, guys. Wow. 17 minutes. Shit. OK, let's move on and let's talk a little bit about. Oh, man, I, I'm going to go ahead and say Stellar Blade. I'm, I'm going to switch it up, put it on Stellar Blade. I've had a chance to play it now. I went, I got I made it to Sky on. I have made it to the desert now and I just beat this chick who I guess she's a guardian to a certain area. OK, where you can only use your gun and. Yeah, I had a little issue with her for a minute trying to figure her stuff out, but got her out of there, tucked her in, you know what I'm saying, combed her hair real quick, got got her got her put to sleep. Um and now I'm uh in this new area and that's why I stopped there. So really enjoying myself with the game. I heard there's a new game plus. I heard that it's a really good new game plus. They have a lot to offer. There's also a photo mode in the works as well and a boss I guess a boss rush mode as well. So they're planning some things here down the pipeline. Uh, and I think uh, this game is awesome. And there's been a lot of talk about Chinese developers because this is a Chinese developer who made this. Is this China? Yeah, I think this is a Chinese developer. Yeah, this is it's definitely going to be more of these coming out. OK, um, I heard something. I read something. I, I can't put my finger on it, but I read that. They're actually gearing up to do more of this uh, for consoles. OK, they do a lot of stuff for mobile, of course, but they're gearing up for consoles. And that's a good thing because they make a lot of uh, good games <laughs> when they do put their minds to it. OK, and there's some other ones I can't think of them right now that are in the pipeline that we're going to see. And I hope they keep coming. I hope they just keep on keeping on. But yeah, right now, Stellar Blade is looking very good. I stopped Rise of the Ronin because I got to the final part and I and I basically just I basically just I couldn't decide. OK, I had to pick a side and then, you know, I, I didn't want to pick a side just yet. So I just stopped it right there before I chose my side and, you know, finished the game for the first playthrough. And then that's where I'm at. So then I said, OK, let me go check out Stellar Blade. I'm in there now. And then I do want to I did play a little Fallout 4. Definitely. Got a little bit of that done and I still haven't touched uh, another crab's treasure yet. So we'll see when I can take a look at that. But right now it looks like I'll be playing a lot of Stellar Blade and I think just Stellar Blade and Fallout 4 for right now. Yeah, I think that's where we're at. So, yeah, you know, and I took a look 
at the summer releases. And there's not as many releases as that I'm excited about that I thought for the summer. And that's kind of good because, like I said, there's some other stuff that I would definitely like to take care of uh, gaming wise. OK, I still have to play the God of War Ragnarok um, DLC. There's the Final Fantasy 16 DLC that I told you guys I'm going to play and redo my playthroughs and play both of those. So after those and I think there's still some other stuff, too, out there. So, yeah, they're, they're, it's going to give me time to do all that. I mean, Wukong doesn't come out until August and I don't have a release date on the uh, Visions of Mana that is coming out. That's another one I'm excited for. It's it's this summer, but who knows? We don't have a release date. I hope we get some sort of announcement. At one of these uh, events that Sony's going to have or one of these gaming events that we're going to have and we get a release date finally. I think that release date will come within the next month, you know, maybe two months. We should have an uh, actual solid release date. I hope it's July, you know, I'm saying something like that because August is, is sold up for Wukong for me personally. But there's nothing else I can think of right now that uh, has really got me wanting to play anything except for uh, except for uh, River City Girls 2, the Double Dragon DLC. And that's this summer as well. But we don't have a concrete release date for that either. So hopefully that's sometime around July. Or, uh, but yeah, that's really it. Uh, I think that. I'm going to replay Final Fantasy 16 and uh, Wukong. That's in August, like I said, and, and and that's it. I can't think of anything else besides the um, let's see what else. Elden Ring DLC as well. That's June. So uh, really, that's it, man. I can't think of anything else that's coming out. Of course, I'm always surprised. I forget things, dates. There's so many dates and things going through my head and I talk about that I could be missing something, but Right now, at the top of my head, that's all I can think of. And that's a kind of a good thing for my wallet because <laughs> I don't need to be buying too many games right now. You know, I'm um, just kind of been busy right now. I'm still in my busy mode. Uh, but, you know, like I said, if it's a good deal or something, you know, hey, I will pick it up for later because I, I I bought Stella Blade and, and waited, you know, a week or two before I even touched that. So it is what it is. And that's when I really, really wanted to play as well. So it is what it is. We'll get to it when we can. And if I hear have any news on any new games that are coming out uh, this summer, I will definitely keep you guys posted. But usually the summer is, you know, release heavy. They, they usually have a lot of stuff that come out in the summer. Right. So I think we'll get a lot of release dates uh, this summer, not necessarily summer releases, but we should get a lot of release dates this summer because I know we have an event or two coming out and uh, we should we should know more then. We may get, you know, some stuff in the fall. Definitely, you know, the fall for sure. September, you know, those months in the holiday season. Yeah, that's when he really gets heavy over there. So uh, we'll see, man. All right. But anyway, Stella Blade is awesome. So far, so good. Now, moving on, I want to give you guys a little bit of some Switch news real quick because, you know, I haven't talked about the switch in a while. It's been a minute. And, and I'm, if I'm being honest with you, my switch has been collecting dust uh, as of late and it won't be picked up again until probably River City Girls, the DLC drops. But still, it's all good. Uh, I love my switch. Please don't get it twisted. It's just not its time in the sun right now. And it will have its time again at some point in time. But right now, the switch two, we're talking about that. If anybody has been wondering about Switch 2, Nintendo is something else. They are going to ride this shit until the wheels fall off. They're not giving up secrets. I'll tell you one thing. If I were to commit a crime, okay, and rob a bank or do something like that, I would want my right hand man or I want my team to be uh, Nintendo. OK, because you're not going to get these fuckers to talk. You're, you're not going to get them to turn on each other. They are going to ride. <laughs> until the wheels fall off, literally, okay? They're not snitching, okay? And, and they're still not right now. We can't get any information from Nintendo right now. The only information we can get right now that I know of that is concrete from them, stating from, from Nintendo, is that everybody is going to have the same save structure um, or account structure that everybody has for the current Nintendo Switch. So what that means is if you have an account with the Nintendo Switch, like if you have digital games and you've downloaded these and, and it's 
you know, associated with your account, uh, games that you bought, games on your wish list. That is what your Nintendo account is. That is what your Nintendo account does. So that's not going to change. That's going to be the same for the Nintendo Switch 2. Now, that leads me into this, because if that's the case, I'm assuming that if you have the same account, that you're going to be able to play backwards compatible games. OK, you're, you're going to be able to play all those games on the switch, too. If you if you ask me, I really think that this is going to be a hybrid Nintendo switch, just a souped up version of the current Nintendo switch. It's a nice, strong version of that. Um, think about it. The the tech in the first switch, the Tegra uh, chip that they use. I mean, that shit is old as fucking dirt. OK, right now. And they're still doing shit with it. So. All the years so far now, I mean, they're definitely doing something different. OK, and it's going to be a lot more powerful. It's just still going to be the switch to me. It's still going to look similar to the, the, the switch one. And I personally, that's what I think is going to happen. And I think all the other stuff is going to be backwards compatible. If we have the same account, which we're going to have, I think it's telling it right there. OK, I don't see them saying, oh, you guys have the same account, but this is just switch two games and this is the switch one. Why would you guys do that? It just doesn't make sense. It's easier. It's an easier transition because there's over 100 million switches out here now. They would be alienating the fuck out of that whole community if they did it like that. So if I'm Nintendo, I'm like, yo, uh, we have over 110 million Nintendo switches in rotation right now. And we're working on a new switch. Okay, we want everything to be backwards compatible so that all the switch owners right now, when the switch two comes out, because believe me, there's going to be a lot of us that aren't going to be able to get our hands on a switch two for quite some time. And when it does come out, we want those people to be able to play their current library right now. Or if they have something saved that uh, on their, you know, on their save list or to buy a later list, we want them to be able to go to the switch two, find it, pull it up and try it out there. And, and I think that's why they're doing that. OK, I think uh, we're going to still do the cartridges. I think we're still going to have cartridge based games. I think this will be the last time, but I think we're still going to have it that way. It's just going to be capable of having more memory. It's going to be capable of more power. And I think that's where we're going to be at. So I'm not I can't tell the future. All I'm saying is the writings on the wall. I'm just following the breadcrumbs. I'm just kind of reading between the lines here. And trying to if I'm a Nintendo company and I'm trying to save money, because trust me, Nintendo is all about saving money and cutting corners. They've done it so many times. OK, especially in a lot of those games where you expect them to be on a cartridge and they're not or they're not completely on the cartridge. That's them cutting corners when they <laughs> trust me. Nintendo's going to save when they can. And uh, I think that they're going to do the same thing with this system here. Uh, they're going to make a shit ton of money with the switch to trust me there as well. And <laughs> but uh, they're still going to save when they can. So that's the news right there with the switch. Uh, I think uh, they no they for a fact, they said that they're going to reveal it. In other words, hey, we're, we're finally from our lips. We're going to tell you guys that about the switch too. We're going to give you guys a release date and all of this stuff that they're, they're going to do that basically before the calendar year. OK, the physical year and physical is not, you know, December. It's actually it goes all the way till March 2025. So they have a lot of time uh, before they, you know, let us know that. And I think what they're going to do is wait till after the holidays. So you're probably looking somewhere around probably somewhere right at the tail end of the physical year, like <laughs> like like February or some shit like that, because I think they're going to try to sell as many switches for the last time this year as they can get that last squeeze that last drop out of everybody else just kind of dwindling and then hit everybody like in february somewhere around there january uh and let everybody know boom here's the switch too and it's coming out da 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 you know what i mean and i'm, I'm gonna assume it's coming out 2025 but if i have to pick a date i'm gonna say something like you know summer 2025 man or if not summer definitely holiday season 2025 okay and we are know that those fuckers are going to be sold out you're not going to be able to find them at all they're probably making them right now they're, they're probably somewhere in guam you know in a sweatshop making these motherfuckers like 
around the clock. OK. And setting them up, you know, if I'm them, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get as many of these produced as I can. They know how to switch. One was they know how crazy and how rabid these Nintendo fans can get. And it's going to be the same thing all over again. And I think if they're smart, they're going to have at least enough to take care of most people. OK, <laughs> but, you know, we'll see. So that's your Nintendo Switch news. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is Xbox. OK, ah, it's out here in these video game streets. Everybody's talking about it. The butter is on the table and it's being used, apparently. Um, and a lot of people are just heartbroken, to say the least. And look, I knew this stuff was eventually coming. I mean, we I talked about it before, guys, when 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 they said that they were going third party, then it, it just basically says, look, we're going to become Microsoft. We're not going to we're basically going to cut the Xbox off. OK, the difference between Xbox and Microsoft is Microsoft is a tech company. They 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 do, you know, computers and they're into air, all kinds of shit. You know, Xbox is like a subdivision, a small subdivision at that uh, within their company that did video games. OK, and they even had their own in-house studios and they made their own IPs and they did all that type of stuff to Halos and, you know, those games. All right. And that is coming to an end. I think that they made a couple boo-boos. One of those was buying Activision Blizzard for 70 billion. I think that right there, guys, just it, 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 <laughs> it crippled them in ways that they couldn't have foreseen. Okay. Down the line. And now they're killing off studios that were actually good studios. OK, award winning studios. OK, they killed off the studio who did Hi-Fi Rush, which was a surprise hit. OK, a surprise game. Everybody loved it for the most part. It was it was a dope game. It was a dope concept and it won a lot of rewards. And they uh, those people, that studio was literally they were on vacation. OK chilling, taking a fucking break when some of them got the news literally on the fucking plane. Yo, the studios axed the whole team gone. That has to be devastational. All right. Nobody would have saw that coming. Most people would assume that, yo, we did great. We got awards. We're doing this. What's our next project? OK, it's crazy. And Redfall, let's not get into Redfall, but we are because <laughs> You know, we everybody knows about Redfall. It was definitely a flop. It, it didn't do what it was supposed to be doing. But word around the campfire, word out here in these video game streets is that that game was not even supposed to come out. OK, there was a lot of things under the hood, things that weren't going right. And the game should have been axed, but they went ahead and made them put the game out. If anything, it, it should have at least had more time to cook. All right. But it didn't. And it came out. And it was a debacle. It was a lot of bugs. There was all kinds of shit happening, but they had great bright spots within the game. OK. And one thing that they didn't have is they didn't have offline mode. OK. You have to be you have to be online. And of course, I talked to I talk about my love hate relationship with online games, mostly hate because there's just too many disadvantages in the end with online games. I'm not saying that every company is like that. There's been plenty of games out here that have, you know, I've put dozens and dozens of hours into the online games like division and stuff like that. But I'm saying that when those maintenances, maintenance uh, stuff has to happen and, and all of that, you're at the, you're at the mercy of the developer. And there's been times as well that I'm look, looking forward to playing and oh, what's going on guys. I can't get in the server. I, I Google it. Oh, the server's down for maintenance or this is happening or that's happening. It, it, it's just a lot of that. And it's just, you know, a bunch of little small, tiny inconveniences as a gamer, you know, that you that you don't want to have to deal with. And uh, even, you know, if you love the game and you want to go back and play it, you know, I was always a guy in the division who thought, yo, I would really love an offline mode here so I could practice my builds. I could just around the clock wouldn't have to worry about anything, you know, just have, you know, me versus, you know, PVE me against a bunch of fucking bots. And, you know, they don't have that. And the crazy thing is. Arcane Studios, the people who was working on Redfall, they were literally working on a patch 
when the company got axed, that would allow everyone to have an offline mode so they could preserve their game. Sorry about that, guys, my phone. Uh, and it didn't happen. It didn't fucking happen. They, they it got killed before that. Now, could something miraculous happen and they end up getting that update out before the company goes belly up? There's a small chance that could happen, but I wouldn't hold my breath. Uh, I, I just think that that's just so ironic that that happened. You know what I mean? If I'm the studio, like I'm wanting to at least conserve this and I don't want the game to go the way of the Dodo uh, once uh, these servers are axed. And it shouldn't, you know what I mean? Especially somebody who is, you know, in conjunction or somebody who believes uh, for or stands for video game um, conservation. I'm, I'm one of those guys. I believe that games should, if they can, find a way to continue to live and, uh, you know, be a piece of history and uh, let people enjoy what they want to enjoy, you know. And this is kind of sad for me on that aspect, even though I never really got into Redfall or anything like that. Just just the whole story behind that and, and even learning about them literally working on a offline patch. It just kind of is heartbreaking, man. It's just sad is what it is. And, you know, it's Xbox is now going to be literally a third party machine is just going to be a game console. It is going to be a game console. You can still play your games on, but it's going to be available everywhere. Hey, this is not exclusive to Xbox. You can play this any on anything. OK, some people just choose. Oh, I just got an Xbox. You know what I mean? But now when people are out there shopping and they're trying to find stuff, you know, hey, I want to play something uh, really awesome and unique. And uh, where can I get one of these? Well, uh, Sony is going to have all the stuff that Xbox has, but it's also going to have some of their own candy uh, and it's all butter free. And they're big blockbuster type stories and characters and things of that nature. You're going to choose that, of course. If, I mean, the, the average person would. OK, but the, the casual gamers, you know, you they're, they're still out there. There's a lot millions of those guys out there. there there's not a lot of people who indulge in games like I do as far as, uh, you know, even the companies who make them publishers and, and, you know, the behind the scenes stuff, the, a lot of gamers, most gamers aren't looking at that stuff. They're not into that type of thing, right? That, that is something a little bit different, but still, uh, the casual gamer will enjoy whatever you give them. Okay. As long as it has a controller and they'll play it. Okay. For the most part, uh, but they won't, they will not understand the joy and happiness of discovering some of these uh, IPs that are out here that are fucking amazing. And uh, they're going to miss out on that unless they decide to get curious. And then that's when the rabbit holes begin to be discovered and people realize they either made a boo boo or they're going to come uh, to the real realization that they're going to have to go back in their pockets and fork out another five, six, seven hundred dollars for a brand new console. OK, and that's just where it is. That's just what it is. Uh, and it's a sad, sad kind of story uh, when you're talking about Xbox, because, hey, you know, they have a lot of history, especially the 360 days. Man, there were some great times in those days. And my son is partaking in some of those now. I mean, he's more of a casual gamer, but he does enjoy his time with his friends and playing his games. And, and I think that's going to be a lot of Xbox players. Uh, but like I said, for the last time in the end. Um, I guess it's going to be safe to say that Xbox is going. It, it's safe to say that the Xbox is going to be going the way of the Dodo. OK, it'll just be the Microsoft box or whatever. I don't even know if they're still going to call it Xbox. I don't know. Uh, the president is this lady they spoke to. Somebody spoke to her recently and they asked her, you know, the state of Xbox and why they were laying off all these companies, uh, these studios and she basically gave a runaround answer, not even a real answer. I, I don't know what the fuck she was saying, what she was talking about. You could have, <laughs> it, it could have been anything. And it, it definitely wasn't an answer. It, I, it was just a straight PR stunt and not even a good one at that. And I, I don't know that I felt bad for her because they just threw her out there to the wolves and uh, they're going to, she's a fucking meme now. Okay. You can pull her up and she's a fucking meme for life. So it is what it is. That's where we're at. Uh, I just don't understand, man, that the money that they fucking spent, they spent so much money buying studios, 
Okay, so many studios. Nothing has happened. Nothing has come of it. I'm trying to find out where they went wrong. Like, I'm really trying to find out what happened. Where, where is the miscommunication? I mean, I don't understand. You have a whole bunch of people where you had a whole bunch of people. You technically you still do until you don't anymore because they said there are more cuts on the way. So that's another thing. Everybody running around unsure of what their fate is. OK, I wouldn't make any plans. I wouldn't buy any houses. I wouldn't buy any cars. I would sit still for the next six months because uh, you could be in for a wild ride. And that's where we're at now. I just. I don't understand all the studios that they bought. They were boasting about it at one point and nothing has come of it. Nothing, nothing. I don't know what's going to happen to Fable. Are we still getting that? Like, I, I don't know these IPs that are still in the air. I don't know. Is there going to be another Halo? Is Will there ever be? I, I don't know. Uh, a Gears of War, will there ever be another one of those? I, I, I doubt it. I seriously doubt it now, but. I don't know, man. It's it just it's sad. It just feels kind of just. Uh, and they were just literally talking about, hey, we're trying to do more stuff for for the Xbox brand. But in the end, it just looks like it's a third party machine. And the only thing that they have still holding on to is the Game Pass now. And a lot of people now are asking about that. How valuable is that going to be? Because they, they're they're <sighs> Microsoft is toying with the idea of actually putting the Call of Duty franchise on the Game Pass to get more people to come into it. I don't know about that one. Maybe they give it a try and maybe they pull back. I don't know. Get ready for some more experiments because they're going to be they're going to be doing them. They're going to be making them. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do. OK, because they do have their own community. They have a huge community. They have a lot of people and they're probably salty as fuck now because, like I said, I don't know what else is coming. I haven't heard anything from any of these other games yet. And I don't know if we ever will. Like I said, Fable, like I was looking forward to that one, but I don't know now. I mean, it could be killed. It could be dead or it could be coming to all platforms. <laughs> so, it, you know, but Game Pass is the only saving grace. I mean, it's the only thing still kind of there that gives people a chance, you know, to kind of do their thing. I think they're going to just run with that and say, hey, here's a subscription like the Netflix thing and. You guys do your thing, man. This is all the games we have. No matter what machine they come out with, I think all of the stuff is going to be backwards compatible. So you can buy older games. You can do stuff like that. And it's still money for them. And I think that's what they're going to be doing. And then, you know, Game Pass will be certain games. It'll be third party, but certain games you'll have and you'll be able to go get them day one if you have the subscription. So uh, when you're talking about money and all that, I, I think. As long as they can break even or, or slightly above that, they're not going to uh, piss on anybody's parade because that's just like I said at the beginning, all Xbox is, is a small sector, one cog in a huge machine, which is Microsoft. That That's it. If Microsoft or if I'm sorry, if Xbox doesn't sell, which they haven't been. They haven't won anything lately at, at all. OK, they haven't won the console wars or anything like that. I mean, they're not hurting. They just instead continue to buy more studios and spend more money. Seventy fucking billion on Activision Blizzard, shit like that. Throwing money at whatever. Still nothing's come of it. It's, to them, they're just like, oh, we spent all this money. Ah, oh, well, you are fucked up. All right, what are we going to do? Well, let's cut some stuff, stuff. Let's do this. Let's do that. They do have shareholders, so they're going to definitely keep them first. I own Microsoft stock, but uh, that's another conversation. But anyway, that's where we're at, man. I, I don't know what else to say. The butter is not just on the table. It's it's literally everywhere. Uh, fingertips, <laughs> pillowcases. It, it's every fucking where right now. And, and I don't there's no there's not enough people that could come in there and clean it up. OK, I just don't think it's possible. You're going to always lift up something and find more butter. And if you're an Xbox fan, you definitely feel that. OK, so RIP, I guess. I don't know. I'm going to I still have Game Pass. I'm going to keep rocking with Game Pass because it's I think it's still I think it's very viable um, still. I think it's worth it right now. It is at least. And I think it still will be in the end. I mean, third party games, yo, there's going to be that one game that other game, maybe three or four games. You're like, yo, 
you know, I can't wait for that to come out. And then you hear an announcement. Hey, well, guess what? It's it's going to be here day one for Game Pass. Oh, shit. It's happened to me so many times. I'm not going to lie to you. Wulong, Fallen Dynasty. There's so many games that it's happened to me um, that, you know, I was thankful to have Game Pass. And my son, too. He doesn't really realize it because I'm just paying the subscription. But to him, it's just like, yo, something, something came out. I'm playing this now. Uh, he was playing Star Wars recently. So, you know, it, 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 it it's it's worth it right now. Uh, and I think it will be for the foreseeable future. Now, like I said, will it matter to Tommy or Billy as much as it matters to me? I don't know. And listening to some of you guys rant online, it doesn't seem so. So it just depends on the individual, I guess. And I'll just leave it at that. I mean, I don't know what else to say about it. I'm hoping they can pull it together. I mean, with all that money, they could do so much good uh, with some with, with certain studios uh, if they if they if they were able to just let them do their thing, let them cook. Uh, but most of these people in Xbox, at least uh, that division, the they're not. And I'm talking about the higher up people. I'm talking about the suit and ties, everybody that's making those ironclad decisions on top of everything. Uh, the big bosses. Most of these people don't play games that they're, they're not into that universe They're not into that world. There's somebody, you know, they're a graduate of some prestigious college somewhere and they just got the job. OK, they haven't touched a video game since if, whenever, if ever. And they're just making some of the uh, most idiotic decisions uh, sometimes because they don't know gaming. They don't know the, the community. They don't know the business. Uh, and that's a shame. I want to thank everybody for coming out, downloading, streaming the show. And uh, all my OG listeners, hey, you know, I love you guys. All my new listeners, hey, welcome to the family. Check me out on all my social media handles on TikTok. If uh, TikTok is still here, <laughs> it's uh, at Random Gameplay Pimpin. Check me out um, at Random Gameplay Pimpin on YouTube as well. Also Twitter slash X. You can catch me at studio MacGyver and also Instagram at studio MacGyver as well. Okay. Yeah, man. Um, that's going to do it for the show. That's going to do it. We do this every Monday, same bad time, same bad channel. I'm going to do some quick edits and then I'm going to go watch some demon slayer. I will see you guys next week. I love you. This is your boy studio MacGyver. And you have been listening to random Gameplay, pimping. See you next time.